Hello, I'm Count Zero. This is a somewhat special episode of Nintendo Power Retrospectives in a vlog sense. Because I'm not doing this as breaking it all down, as it would do for a movie review or that sort of thing, where I came back from that, because I came back from a concert. I, and a concert or something Nintendo related. Specifically, Symphony of the Goddesses Master Quest. For those who are unfamiliar with it, Symphony of the Goddesses is a ongoing symphonic concert series featuring and highlighting the music of the Legend of Zelda games presented in a orchestral format. In the case of this concert, it was done by the, uh, the music was performed by the Portland Symphony with the Portland Youth Choir doing, well, choral vocals. This is the first time I've been to see them. This is th this actually the second time the concert series came to Portland. First time was back two or three years ago, and I missed it that time. I just come off of seeing video games live, and it's a little tight for cash at the time, so I had to make a decision, and no Symphony of the Goddesses for me that time. So, this time, well, I very much enjoyed the concert. The music selection was predominantly games that we haven't gotten to yet in terms of Nintendo Power Perspectives. We're talking like Awkward Time, Majora's Mask, Skyward Sword, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and that's the main thing there. It is somewhat notable that unlike with video games live, where occasionally they will drop in music for things that aren't quite out yet or will be out soon, because they have hookups with composers of major games, and they're on good terms with the publishers of those games, so they might drop in a piece of music for World of Warcraft, for a new expansion that's coming out soon, or dropping in a piece of music for um, StarCraft, for example. For some of the goddesses, if you're coming to this expecting, oh, maybe they'll drop in a little bit of music from the uh, new Legend of Zelda game, just to give us a little tease, you're going to be disappointed. We're not getting into that yet. What we do get is we get a very good selection of music. It's very structured very well. When it comes to a concert, and we're talking about doing a symphonic type thing, and the concert is structured, like for the second, for the for the latter two thirds to three quarters of the concert is structured as a symphony. They have different movements based on various games. The way that it is performed, the way that the music is structured is important in terms of what music is in what order. And it works really well. And that's done here. It prevented a degree of monotony from sitting in, and it made sure to set certain pieces of music and certain games in places of prominence without necessarily going in chronological order by game release. So, for example, we get like Wind Waker and Ocarina of Time early on, but later on we also get, and toward the middle, we get into, well, get to like, okay, and now here's Majora's Mask, now here's Link to the Past, and that sort of thing where these are pieces of music that are appreciated, and lots of people will know them just as much as they know the music from from uh, Ocarina of Time, but it gives you something to keep, you keep going, and also lets you hear some pieces of music that you might be less familiar with. Not as many people necessarily played Skyward Sword. A lot of people did, but not necessarily. I haven't played Skyward Sword yet, for example. The music in general is excellent. I mean, it's the Legend of Zelda games. Um, their music is generally good. And what it, it, they do some really good stuff there, and the arrangements are very well done, very moving, very engrossing. And with how they handled presentation gameplay footage, 
as opposed to replay video game symphony, which didn't do much gameplay for this stuff when I caught them when they came to Portland. The meat footage here did a good job of focusing a lot on musical motifs as well. And by musical motifs, I don't just mean like in terms of like late motifs and themes throughout the series, they certainly come up and they do structure the pacing of the music so that it fits with this. So for example, the main Legend of Zelda theme. Dun 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 that one. You it it comes up throughout it throughout the the symphony, but it doesn't go full force, full power, full bore until the end, which is if you're familiar with symphonic structure, if you listen to classical music, if you read a Papa, Beethoven or Mahler or Dvorak symphony into your CD player, like like the actual symphony on CD, not like a collection of snippets from various symphonies that you picked up from the store. You are, or here on the radio, if you plop that on your CD player or your record player or whatever your music, your MP3 player, whatever, you plop it in, you listen to the whole thing. That's how you'll they, they'll structure. If they're do, if they're using themes and leitmotifs, that's how they'll build up a theme. And they did that excellently here. It, it felt not just like oh, this is the greatest hits of the Legend of Zelda music, which is what you'd get for something like, for example, video games live, where it's the greatest hits of these various video games. It's not like for Final Fantasy, where there's so many disparate. Well, like with, with distant worlds, where there's so many disparate and distant apart worlds with different themes and leitmotifs throughout the Final Fantasy franchise, with a few exceptions of themes that will come up, like the like the crystal theme, for example, then it, where you can, can you, it's ultimately becomes the greatest hit, and you're just dropping stuff in, and it's more about an emotional climax than just a musical climax and a structural climax. For Sitting the Goddesses, because even though there's a very different continuity, and I guess there's a timeline, but there, there's very different structure to the world and the style to the worlds, there's enough recurrence of musical themes across the Legend of Zelda series that you can do this very much this symphonic construction, building up of themes, and having them interplay with each other so that you, when you get to the conclusion of the symphony, which in this case they focus on Link to the Past as the final movement of the symphony before they come back for the encore thing, is you can, you're, they're building up these themes that debuted in Link to the Past or earlier and constru- and helping to, to, to build their weight and bring this weight behind them so that when you get to Link to the Past, you see from a chronological standpoint, in terms of game release, where those themes went and how they've permeated the rest of the franchise, which is a fitting structural point, because you're also seeing how these various game mechanics that debuted in Link to the Past permeated throughout the rest of the franchise, like different worlds, like the hook shot, like the mechanics of your tennis balling back, tennis racketing back. Ganon's attacks and that sort of thing. How you see it uh, mechanically linked to the past is pollinated down the line, the same way with the musical themes have pollinated on down the line, interwoven down the line in a way that fits and makes sense and, and builds on the, for lack of a better term, familiarity of the player. And, yeah, so it, it, it's really well structured together. And I'm kind of disappointed that they've never put out a soundtrack CD or a live recording for Symphony of the Goddesses because because they structure it so well, it brings a different degree of presentation. It gives it a little special than what you'd get with you just bought these different soundtrack CDs. If you, when you ordered the Majora's Mask and the um, Ocarina of Time and Skyward Sword soundtrack CDs 
top of Amazon or whatever. It's different this way because of how the suites are st structured and the uh, how they all sort of combine together and fit so perfectly. It's really a testament to the orchestration and planning that's put into building this concert tour and plus makes it really worth seeing and why I'm glad I went and see it this evening. Um, if you have an opportunity to see Symphony of the Goddesses, definitely go see it. I would really like to see actually more video game related symphonies in the future. We, we've had video games live. We've had franchise specific ones. There's the Pokemon Symphony. That was the, there's Symphony of the Goddesses and there's Distant Worlds and there's Replay. I'd like to see more stuff like this because for the double reason of highlighting the craft that goes into video game music, which oftentimes can be under, not sorry, under realized is not the right word, but under recognized, even among people like me who play video games, because hearing these relatively simplistic melodies, seeing them translated into a more complicated or orchestral arrangement brings more highlights to the level of craft that's there in the first place. And I appreciate that, and I think more people would appreciate that level of craft for they able to see more concerts like this. And also, it is really great seeing an orchestra live. As much as I enjoy listening to classical music on the radio, watching on television, watching it, or listen, on, on seeing concert performances on DVD, or, list, or listening to CDs, seeing an orchestra live is a very different experience. And, and def, if you have the opportunity to go, definitely go. So that covers my general thoughts about Sympathy of the Goddesses. Sympathy of the Goddesses. Have you seen The Legend of Zelda? Uh, Sympathy of the Goddesses, either the earlier tour or the new tour, Master Quest, live? If so, I'd like to post in the, com in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If there are any other video game concerts you've been to, or a video game concert that you'd like to see, definitely check those out as well. And what is your dream symphonic video game music playlist. What pieces of music would you like to see arranged in orchestral fashion and put together in a symphonic manner like this? These are all questions, but I'd love to hear your answers to. I know if I wouldn't mind seeing the Ease series get the Symphony of the Goddesses treatment. But that's just me. Maybe you've got your own stuff. So thank you very much for watching. And next week, we will have the next episode of Nintendo Power Retrospectives. Before I go, a quick bit of business. For October, I am going to two conventions. I will be at Portland Retro Gaming Expo and Comoricon. As a panelist, I will just be attending as a guest. But if you see me wandering around, please say hi. Um, both of those are consecutive weeks in October. That is... The weekend of the 22nd for Portland Retro Gaming Expo and Halloween weekend for Comoricon. So, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.